Welcome back to Physical Chemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. This is going to be one of the first videos where we start talking about what are called colligative properties. Now, colligative properties are defined as certain properties of a solution that are really just dependent on the number of particles that you have in the solution. Okay? Um, it doesn't matter what type of particle, it really just depends on the number of them. So that's a colligative property. And there's really four colligative properties, three of which we're going to talk about in the next few videos. The first one which we're going to do here is what's called the freezing point depression. The second one is boiling point elevation, and the third is osmotic pressure. And the idea here is if we look at a pure solution of pure water, so there's nothing dissolved in the water, well, we can, we can describe a few properties of that water, and you should be able to off the top of your head. For example, the freezing point of pure water is zero degrees Celsius. The boiling point of pure water is 100 degrees Celsius. Those are just some things we know about water. Now let's take that pure water and add some solute to it. So we could do a number of things. We could add some salt to it, some sodium chloride. We could add some ethanol to it. We could do a number of things to that water. It's no longer pure water, it's a solution. But the resulting solution after we add that solute will have a lower freezing point than pure water and a higher boiling point than pure water. So if pure water has boiling points and freezing points of 100 and 0 degrees Celsius respectively, if we add some salt to water and boil it, that water is not going to boil at 100 degrees Celsius. It may boil at 102 or 103 degrees Celsius at a higher temperature with added salt than it would if it were pure. And so that increase in the boiling point when we add that solute is what's called the boiling point elevation. Now if you add those solutes to pure water and you make a solution and you try and freeze it, it won't freeze at zero degrees Celsius. It'll freeze at a temperature lower than that, maybe negative five, negative 10 degrees Celsius. And this is actually a principle that people use every day, whether or not they even realize it. So here's some alcoholic beverages right here. Now, obviously, these are not pure water. Okay? If you stuck pure water in a freezer that was at zero degrees Celsius, that water would freeze. Now, these beverages have other things dissolved in them, including ethanol. And those solutes create a solution with a lower freezing point than pure water. This is why, in particular with hard liquors and wines, you can put those in the freezer and they won't freeze. They'll stay liquid. Because at zero degrees Celsius, and even sometimes a few degrees below that, they don't freeze because their freezing point has been depressed or lowered. Now, uh, here in this video, we're really going to be discussing the first one, freezing point depression, and we're going to work a practice problem. And before we go any further, I want to introduce this formula right here. This delta T of the freezing point depression, this is the change in temperature associated between the original pure solvent, which might be water, and whatever the solution is after we add the solute. So that difference in temperature would be the freezing point depression. So for example, if we compared pure water uh, to water with a certain amount of ethanol in it, right, like this, and the freezing point went from zero degrees Celsius to negative 10 degrees Celsius, well then the freezing point depression would be 10 Kelvin or 10 degrees Celsius, okay? This is equal to, for the freezing point depression, we use a negative sign here. It's equal to this constant, this K sub F. This is a freezing point depression constant times the molality of the solute. So this is molality. This is not mass. And if we know one of these two values, we can calculate the third. Now, it's also important to know that if we take the delta T of the freezing point depression or negative Kf times the molality of the solute, both those things are equal to this expression right here. They're equal to the molality of the solute times the gas constant R times the fusion temperature squared. And the fusion temperature is the temperature of melting, but remember, uh, freezing is the opposite process, so it's actually the same number. It's squared times the molecular weight of our given compound divided by the delta H of fusion or enthalpy of fusion. Okay, so again, fusion, yes, that is for um, melting, but we can use the same value here. Okay, and then we just take the negative of that. And all this in blue right here, this is really just an expression for K sub F. Okay, 
Okay, let's go and actually work a problem here. And in this question, we're not going to use this inner formula right here. We'll talk about using that later. This is a simpler problem. So let's read it. We've got two grams of some unknown compound that reduces the freezing point of 75 grams of benzene from 5.53 to 4.90 degrees Celsius. What is the molar mass of the compound? So I already mentioned that this big M right here, this is the molar mass of our solvent. This would be the molar mass of benzene. This is not the molar mass of the unknown compound. That's the solute. So just keep in mind this M, this is not what we're looking for, okay? But we're gonna use this formula, delta T, the freezing point depression is equal to negative Kf times the molality of the solute. Now again, this Kf, this is for the solvent. We would look this up in a table, but we know benzene, we know benzene is the solvent, so we're gonna look up in a KF table to find that for benzene. We have that right here. So here's some parameters for various solvents. We can find benzene right here. And we can see that it's KF, it's freezing point depression constant is negative 5.12. Um, now in the way I've set up the formula, and we can actually use the positive value of this, it really doesn't matter a whole lot. But again, 5.12 degrees Celsius, uh, times kilogram per mole, that's our Kf. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind. And the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out what the molality of the solute is. Okay, so we can rearrange this formula right here. We can divide both sides through by negative Kf, and then we get that the molality of the solute is equal to the freezing point depression, the delta T right here, divided by negative K sub F. All right. This is our freezing point depression constant. Now, the delta T right here, this is really just final minus initial. That's all a delta is. A change is final minus initial. Well, the initial is what we consider to be the original freezing point of pure benzene. Well, that's 5.53 degrees Celsius. And then our final temperature, that freezing point, would be after we added the unknown compound to it. That would be our 4.90 degrees Celsius. So our freezing point depression is really 4.90 minus 5.53 degrees Celsius, and then we divide by the negative Kf. Again, we can just use the positive value of Kf in the way I have the formula set up, but it's divided by negative 5.12 degrees Celsius kilogram per mole. Now, I will go ahead and say this, that how you actually deal with the signs in this formula, the negatives, all that, is really not very important. It's kind of inconsequential. However you do this, just understand that the molality that comes out has to be positive. So if you flip the sign somewhere, it's not a big deal because you know that molality must be positive, so just drop the minus sign. And if your instructor really cares so much about setting it up correctly, now just flip these two and do 5.53 minus 4.90. Again, not a big deal, just some tricks to remember. Molality is positive. And whenever we divide all this out, we get that the molality of our unknown compound, which is the solute, is 0.123 molal. Now, it's important to remember that molal units are moles of the solute per kilogram of solvent, not solution, solvent. So our molality is 0.123 moles of our unknown compound per kilogram of benzene. Okay, Why do we use molality here? The reason we use molality is because molality, unlike volumes, like liters, molality is independent of temperature. We got changes in temperature right here. So molality is truly independent of temperature because mass doesn't change if you increase the temperature. Mass never changes with that. This is a constant value, more or less. Well, now we know that for every 0.123 moles of our unknown compound, we have one kilogram of benzene. Well, we can figure out how many total moles we have of our unknown compound because we know how many total grams there are of benzene. So what I would basically need to do is convert this to kilograms by dividing by 1,000. And so that means I have 0.075 kilograms of benzene. Well, what I can do is take that molality in these units and multiply by the total mass of our solvent, benzene, and then the kilograms cancel, and that leaves me with just moles, and really moles of our unknown compound. And so in this solution, I have 0 0.00923 moles of our unknown compound, our solute. Well, how does that help us? Well, I already know how much I have of it in terms of its mass. 
If I have a mass and I have a number of moles right here, I can calculate the molecular weight because molecular weight is grams per mole. So I simply take 2.00 grams, that's the mass of my unknown compound, and then I divide by the number of moles of my unknown compound. So I divide by 0 0.00923 moles. And in the end, I get a molar mass of 216.80 grams per mole. That is the molar mass of my solute. That is the unknown compound. Now, one very important thing before we conclude this video that I want to reiterate, it's extremely important. When you're looking at the expanded formula for K sub F, you have this gas constant times temperature of fusion squared times big M divided by the enthalpy of fusion. Remember that this big M, this is the molar mass of the solvent. This has nothing to do with your solute, or in this case, your unknown compound. So this molar mass would be that of benzene. Just wanted to make that perfectly clear. So if they're asking for the molar ma mass of the solute right here, then you do the problem pretty much exactly as we just did it, um, assuming that's what the information you have is, okay? But if they ask you for the molecular weight of the solvent, or they give you the molecular weight of the solvent, you know that you're actually looking at this expansion of K sub F. And we'll actually do an example of that either in the next video or two from now. So make sure to join us then. And in any case, I hope this video made sense to you and you learned a little bit about freezing point depression. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.